So I wanted to make a video about React. I see a lot of people misunderstanding what this is and not using it in the best way that they could for their particular LLM project. The hardest thing to do with large language models is getting them to do what you want them to do. This has always been a challenge, and this is where a large majority of the research around large language models is dedicated specifically to this. One of the key papers for approaching this has been the React paper. And this basically is all about reasoning and action. That's what React actually stands for. And what they did was basically advance the way of thinking from just standard sort of prompting through chain of thought prompting to actually now being able to have reason tracing and actions as well in this. So let's jump in and just have a look at what they actually did and what these things actually are. So first off is the idea of just reasoning. So this came with the chain of thought paper. And th what they found here was that just by getting a model to do its reasoning up front, you increase the performance of the model, meaning that you get better results out of the model. So the idea here is that large language models, if you just ask them a question without asking for anything else, they will tend to give you an answer uh, and then they will tend to double down on that answer, meaning any sort of reasoning that they give you after that will be justification for that answer. Whereas if you can get them to do the reasoning first, then give the answer, the, the answer tends to actually be much better because the reasoning primes what is going to be needed in the answer so that the answer itself ends up being a much better answer. So this is the sort of standard you know, reasoning only paradigm of thinking. There was also another paradigm of thinking of that if we can get them to actually do something in an environment, taking an action in an environment, and then use that as an observation back in there. So this is models, say can, and a number of different ideas that were going around about using actions on environments to basically help uh, large language models. And this is where React comes in. So React basically uses both these techniques together and shows that this can actually get much better results. So we've got the reasoning up front, then we've got it taking some kind of action, we're going to be using a tool if we're talking about things like in Langchain and stuff like that. Then we're getting some observation back into the language model, and then this can be used then for refining the reasoning. So you're getting multi-step ways of, of thinking, but not just in one shot, like with chain of thought, but over multiple shot with this. So if we look at some examples of th this, th these are some examples of basically from the hot pot Q and A data set. And you can see that if you just ask the question straight up, then you would basically get just this answer. If it was going to be reasoning only, we would incorporate some sort of chain of thought prompt in there. And then we will get something back where we've got a little bit of the sort of reasoning behind this before it gets to the answer there. If we've got action only, it's basically telling it to go do a search for this, bring back the observation, do some kind of lookup, bring back an observation, and then come to the answer that way. React prompting here is where we're doing it in such a way that first off, it will have a thought, which is the reasoning uh, tracing that's going on here. So in, in this case of this question, the thought is I need to search seven brief lessons on physics, find its author then find out the author that has worked in France since. So you can see here that this is multiple step reasoning of, of what it's doing. But then it has the action of actually doing those things, bringing back an observation. Then now with that, using all of this that's already created, it comes up with the next logical step or thought in that. So here it's basically going through that. It then does its actioning step, you know, number two brings back an observation for that. And now it's got enough to actually complete the, the question that we asked for from the start. So then it just gives us the answer with this finish being the answer there. So this is how it works. There are a number of different other examples that we can look at from the paper, but the way this is combined is that you combine this with in-context learning to giving it, you know, priming it with multiple examples of this kind of thing, and then giving it a question so that it follows those step-by-steps of having the thought go on, 
then the action, then an observation. And then if it needs more thoughts and, and actions and observations until finally you get the finished answer out there. So if we look at the paper, we can see in here that there's quite a lot going into this idea of the original prompting for this kind of thing, the action prompting, the chain of thought for this. And then finally the react. Now it is true that react will often use a lot more tokens in the way that it's working because you've basically got your question. You've got some kind of thought going on here. You've then basically got the search and the observation that it brings back, which gets fed in and you've got multiple calls to the large language model, but overall it allows you to basically get a much better result out of this kind of thing. So let's jump in and have a look at some code in Langchain of how this uh, works and get you to play around with it yourself in a, in a notebook. So let's jump into the code and have a look at how all of this is put together. So th the first sort of simplest example here that I'm going to start off with is chain of thought reasoning. So you'll see that here, I'm basically just setting up a simple open AI model. You're going to find that a lot of the reasoning stuff just doesn't work with the open source models. People are, are looking at trying to get open source models to work. There are some tricks about that. I will maybe do a, a video in the future and maybe release a model myself for doing it. But for the time being, I, I'm just going to stick to showing you on the open AI model so you can see what it's actually doing. Here, we're basically setting up the text DaVinci 3 model. Really the best model for this kind of thing is going to be GPT-4. The bigger the models are, they tend to be better at reasoning and the models that have been fine tuned from or have a large amount of code in their pre-training also tend to be good at the reasoning sort of tasks. So, okay. Chain of thought reasoning here. We're basically just get, getting the chain of thought by doing this explain step by step. So if I say explain step by step, how old is the president of the United States? Uh, and I'm just printing it, passing this in and printing it out. You can see that, okay, what we get uh, from this is that it goes through and says, well, okay, the current president of the United States is Joe Biden. Don't forget, this is when the models cut off in late 2021 from this. Joe Biden was born and then it's got a date for his birth. And then it's basically got uh, to calculate his age, subtract his birth year from the current year. So it still thinks that it's 2021 in this. And therefore he's 78 years old. It's done a pretty nice job there of actually going through and working out, okay, how old is he based on these things? Just to show you uh, another example of this, if we didn't use the chain of thought, if I come up with something like, how would I get to from Singapore to San Francisco? And I just ask the question, it will just give me an answer. And then anything that it gives after the answer. So you can see here, it's saying the answer is the most direct route is to fly. But then anything after that is really going to be a reinforcement or a justification of the answer that it gave there. So th this is kind of not what we always want. And this is one reason why we get hallucinations a lot, because if it gives an answer, it then feels it has to justify that answer. If we turn this into chain of thought now, and we put explain step by step, how would I get from Singapore to San Francisco? Now it's got the, okay, book a flight from Singapore to San Francisco. And it's, it's going to go through this step by step for this. So this is the basic sort of chain of thought thing to improve on that react is going to be using both reasoning and actions in here. Now, if we don't give it any tools, I want you to see that, okay. The way that React works is that you use tools, but let's start off and just say, okay, we don't give it any tools. So we've got, how old is the president of the United States? But now we're going to feed in a whole lot of in-context learning in here. So you can see here, we're going to have an example of a question, and then it's going to come up with a thought. And this is going to be the reasoning traces in this thought here. And in, in many ways, that's like the priming it for giving the answer. But then we're not asking for the answer. We're then asking for it to give an action. So the action that it's decided, so this is taken from the paper. So in the paper, the only tool that they really use or the main tool that they use is Wikipedia. And they have two ways of using it as a search or as a lookup there. And you can see that here, it's basically saying that it's a search and then whatever's in brackets is what it's going to actually search. 
So it does that. And then because we're doing the in-context learning, we're priming it that, oh, you would get this, this observation back and then you would have a new thought and then you'd have a new action. Then you get a new observation back. Then you'd have a thought, then an action, then a new observation back until finally you get to the answer that you're after. And then your action is just finish. And then whatever's in the brackets there is going to be the final answer out. So you can see this is one example for the in-context learning. And then we've got a second example, a third example. We've got multiple examples uh, going on in there. And then finally, we pass in our actual question there. So if we basically just take this prompt uh, and throw it into the large language model, we can see that, okay, what do we get out? Now, remember, it's not hooked up to any tools here. So it's going to have to hallucinate the tools, like it's just following what was done here. So we can see that, okay, it comes back and it says, thought, I need to search the president of the United States, find their age and answer the question. So first off is search president of the United States. Now it then hallucinates back that it got back an observation saying Joe Biden is the 46th and current president of the United States. So then its next thought is, okay, well, now that I know that who the president is, I need to find out his age. Then it proposes that it's going to do an action. It then hallucinates the observation that it gets back. And then it decides that, okay, the thought is that's going to be the final answer. So just give that answer there. So it hasn't used any tools here, right? And, and in fact, this is basically just in context learning of using the prompts to encourage it to think this way. And this is the key thing or, or you know, the, the main prompting element of React. So if we come down and look at implementing this in actually in LangChain, we're going to actually use some tools here. And so we're going to basically have the tool set up here, and this is going to be the Wikipedia tool. It's going to have searching. It's going to have looking up for this example. Now you've seen me do custom agents where I basically put in lots of different kinds of tools. And then the idea is that then it can basically use those things, use those tools for different kinds of answers for this. So we've basically set up our agent for this. We're basically using the text of Inchi three model. Like I said, the best model for this at the moment would be the GPT four model. You find the chat GPT model is a bit hit and miss with some of this stuff. Uh, sometimes it will work. Sometimes it doesn't work as well. All right. Now we ask it. You know, how old is the president of the United States? So you can see, again, the thought is that I need to search the president of the United States, find his age, and then finish. And then it outputs what kind of what it did before, except now we've got an output parser. Now, if you look at the last few videos I've made about output parsers and using them for custom agents, that output parser basically comes in and says, well, I'm going to just stop this here. And I'm going to basically take this search and what the actual input for the search is, and I'm going to use that. So it basically just runs a regex over the response back, finds the action, finds the search for it. It then triggers that, runs that, gets that back. And that's what we're seeing in blue, what it actually got back from Wikipedia. It now then reprompts the, the language model with this as the observation. And so because Remember, language models are just continuing from what they last saw. In, in here, we would also have a, a scratch pad. And that scratch pad would then now show that we've got the question of who's the president of the United States. It's, we've got the first thought. We've got action, what it's going to search. And then we've got the observation back from Wikipedia, which is this. And then you can see that, okay, now it actually decides that, all right, so... I've got the information that I need. So I just finish and I'm going to answer 78 years old. Now, remember it's thinking that it's 2021 in here. If I try it where I say, okay, how old will the president of the United States be in June, 2023? Again, it changes its thoughts. So the reasoning changes here. I need to then find out how old they will be in June, 2023. It then basically gets this. Now, interestingly, it didn't decide that it needed another step to use a calculator or anything like that. It was confident in its answer. It gave the right answer back here, but that doesn't mean that we'll always do that. Often, the more you can get it to do multiple actions, the better the result will be that you get out of this. So if we pull this apart and just look at this, 
we can see that, okay, what was actually in that prompt that we were putting in? So it's the same as what I had before, except how many examples do they have? One, two, three, four, five different examples in this. And so this is definitely using a lot of tokens that, that we've got going on there, but it kind of needs that to prime it, to be able to give back the right kind of uh, response back. This is one of the reasons why the open source models don't do so well with this, because often they don't have a big token limit. If you're looking at models like the T5 and stuff like that, they often won't be able to fit these in there. Now you can see we pass in the question. We also pass in the agent scratch pad. So the agent scratch pad at the start is empty. Then as it basically generates thoughts, does searches or thoughts, actions to do the searches, gets the response back as an observation. This gets filled out in the agent scratch pad. So let's have a look at a, a sort of multi hop question. So here's an, an example of where we ask it, what is the first film that Russell Crowe won an Oscar for and who directed that movie? So the idea here is that it can't just, it needs multiple hops to do this. And sure enough, you can see it starts off like, okay, I need to search Russell Crowe and find out the first film he won an Oscar for and who directed that movie. So it starts off Russell Crowe, it gets the observation back about him, and then it uses that now to generate a new thought that to find the first film Russell Crowe won an Oscar for, I can search for Gladiator 2000 film. That It works out that that's what he won an Oscar for. It does that search. It gets the information back from that. Obviously, somewhere in there, right here, in fact, it works out who actually that was directed by. And so now its thought is, okay, Gladiator is a 2000 epic historical drama film directed by Ridley Scott. So now it says, okay, it, it works out, you know, that Crow won best actor in there. So it's got its thoughts going through there. And then now it basically gives out the action you know, okay, the, the movie was Gladiator, the director was Ridley Scott, that it comes back there. If we look at this in debug mode, we can see that, sure enough, what's going on? It basically starts out, it's generating all this out from there. So it gets the prompt passed in, and I'll, I'll come back and talk about the prompting in a, in a second. It gets the prompt pa passed in, and we can see that, okay, it basically came back and it got chopped off so that the, we've just got the action there. Right. So the action is search Russell Crowe. It, it then goes off and, and does that. And then now we're basically getting uh, the result back from that. And then goes off and does that. And now we can see that the tool start is where basically it was using the, this tool. Uh, the input to the tool was Russell Crowe. How did it get that? It got that from the output parser, passing that out of the result that it got back. And then basically it takes the end of the tool found the, the Russell Crowe filmography, it brings those back. It then is entering, going back to the LLM, but in here, we're not just getting the long prompt that we had at the start. We're also now getting the scrap, the question, which is the question that we, we asked and we're getting the scratch pad. So this is the scratch pad of the thought that's going on there and the action that it took and the observation that it came back with from Wikipedia in this case. And then we can see that as it, after it comes back with that, it's basically priming it for the next thought in this case. So again, once it's got that thought out, it then, you know, once it basically takes that prompt in, it can now basically generate the next thought and, and go through that and then go through the process again until finally it comes back down where it's, you know, extracted out this information from the tool. Here, it's basically got Gladiator 2000, and we'll see that it, it comes to the end of where it, it basically makes a decision that, okay, that the action is going to be final. So, but it brings back Russell Crowe won an Oscar for Gladiator in 2000. And we can see that the final bit, action final, is going to be this. And that's what gets passed out as the result to us at the end. So this is how the React chain works in LangChain, and this is how the concept works. It's a very important concept to understand. Now, where people make a lot of mistakes with this, let me show you, is that all of these, all of this prompt comes from the React paper. There's no reason why the prompt must include these examples. 
really you should be uh, changing the examples to examples that are going to suit your particular task that you're getting the language model to do. So if you were doing a specific task about finance or something, you would actually make sure that the questions, the thoughts, the actions, the observations and stuff here relate to finance or relate to the topic that you're interested in there. That, that's the key thing here. Now, it will still work pretty well with the big models if you just use the basic prompt. But if you want to get better results, you'll come in and customize this prompt so that you can use it for the particular kinds of reasoning tasks and reasoning and action tasks that you're doing. And also you can then put in uh, the different kinds of tools that you're going to be using in there as well. So overall, this is just uh, getting you to understand React prompting. It's a very cool skill and it, used with the right language model, it, it does really well. Like I said, currently with most open source language models, this won't work. Just they, they don't have the ability to do the reasoning. They've never been trained on anything like this. This will change in the, in the future going forward. All right. As always, if you've got any questions, please put them in comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.